<laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> You, you know, I have to say, Robert, and hi, everybody, but I have to say this first. I love these talks mostly because we get together. <laughs> yeah, it's just such a great really, thing. And, but we wanted to do, hi, everybody. We wanted to share a, a little uh, talk today about what is Advent and why we think it's so special to do a work, uh, a series of, of seminars, um, a reflections class, a reflections parallel through the Advent season and what our classes are about. So we thought we'd get together and share that. And um, before this video started, um, I was chatting with uh, David and Vince about what is Advent. So I'm gonna just jump in because it is a feast celebrating the coming of the light, but it's the light I want to, I want to emphasize because light is the mystical substance through which the divine travels. Think of it that way. It's the mystical current of God. It is the, the substance of all the elements that you crave the most. You crave the light. You will say, Oh, the light just went on. Or there's a fear of inner darkness because you want the light. You do things organically that you don't even pay attention to. People say, I have, I have this uh, weather disorder where I have to be around the sun all the time. I need the light. I need the light. And it's not just a physical thing. It's a bio-spiritual, ecological, archetypal thing. And since the beginning of forever people have societies tribes have done paintings have done rituals around the coming back of the light mm -hmm. they've they've celebrated it 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 is more than just oh we don't need candles anymore or fires there's it means it represents if the light comes back then we know the seasons will come again that food will come back that that the, the, the crops will come back, the leaves will come back. And, it, it, and it's not just the leaves on the outside, it's the leaves on the inside. It means I will grow again. It means there's always hope that the seasons of life will always continue. They will continue in my family. They will continue in me. Life is, the, the, the contract with God is I will always provide life. So Advent is this celebration this ritual of one candle after another increasing the light as we move into the, the darkest day of the year, the winter solstice, and then the light comes back. Carolyn, this is what we need to talk about. You know, Advent for me is, I think, one of my most favorite mystical practices of the year. It belongs to every wisdom tradition. Nobody owns Advent. Advent is for everybody, everywhere. And it's actually, I think, for all of the time. That said, we can only bear so much light, so we go unconscious. Yes. And this is our way of coming back to the light and being conscious again and really hopping on board the Advent invitation at this time and saying, let's get ready all over again. I like to think of Advent as like an alarm clock that's singing, wake up, get ready, be prepared for a new beginning. Mm -hmm. And and as you were speaking, I had the image of, um, of the spiral. Mm -hmm. You know, we're coming around again. Mm -hmm. So often I think we live our life a bit like um, the Anglo-Saxon arrow that's always pointing forward. But life's not like that. It isn't about pointing forward. It's about coming around again and again and again to, to where we are. And, you know, one thing that I found very helpful with Advent is that Advent in Latin is Adventus, which means arriving. And that's exciting. But even more interesting is the Greek word for Advent, which is actually parousia, P A R. Yeah. U S I A. And that means presence. presence. Something that's already here that we were too busy to notice. Now that's exciting. 
that's what Advent is for. And I think that's what our program is for as well, is recognizing what's already here, but we were just too damn busy to notice. You know, I think that's the light in all creation. Hmm. I think that's the presence of power in all creation. I, I think another way, I, I just love this. I don't know if I'm talking to myself or to other people, but as you express it, and I just love the way you express things. So um, another way to talk about the power of Advent is it's, it's kind of like the power of truth where the light is truth and sometimes truth is so powerful that it's blinding so we take it one candle at a time because the advent wreath has four candles and i think that our relationship with light because it's truth where the light goes on sometimes we have to approach truth one tiny light at a time because once all the the candles in us are lit a transformation happens. Yeah. Wow. And and so when you say Advent happens all the time, I think in in a way that we could describe in our in our in the coming weeks is what it means to understand lighting small little candles in ourselves along the way if when they represent I need to understand something. Mm. And I, I know I need to understand myself better, or I need to understand why I'm in this situation and consider it a path of Advent. And, and I know that it's going to change me and I need it in bite-sized candles. Yeah. Oh, and I love that because as you're talking, I get, I get an image that we're going to walk a path with these tea light candles, just one, at, one at a time. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, it's very poignant as you speak and my 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 body sort of has gone a bit soft and there's a bit of there's pain that I can feel in the sense that you know this is this is about returning to the self that is light filled somehow mm -hmm. that was never afraid of the light mm -hmm. um, but at the same time has somehow wandered away from it and and it's 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 very compassionate what you're saying, because I think it, it, we recognize that we can only stand so much light. And yet we are destined almost to disappear into this light eventually, um, to be with our you know, true nature again. You know, I think one of the greatest gifts we can give people when, as teachers, <clears throat> and I certainly strive to do that in my own, is to take the profound truth of what you just said, for example, there's only so much light we can bear, but ground it in a way mm. that makes sense in their own life. I mean, if we look at our classes, celebrating the light, mm -hmm. talk about what that means, the light will split you open and, and what it means to have a truth, a tiny truth, a tiny understanding, begin to tear one's fabric apart. Mm -hmm. Like a tiny understanding such as, I am an addict mm. or, and then what do I do if I suddenly recognize, oh my God, I am an addict or, oh my God, I am the one that's creating the disharmony here. Mm. That's a form of light. That yeah. the light, the, the first candle goes on, but then the second candle is, what do I do about that? I mm -hmm. need more light to get me out of this dark place because there's not enough. Mm -hmm. And how do we pray? Our, so we take, the, the, the second class, which is why we said we need to take people from the light in into the why darkness is essential. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we we recognize that, you know, when we talk about darkness, you know, darkness um, often hasn't had good PR over the centuries, not least because <laughs> we, we, we often <laughs> talk about darkness. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. there's a darkness that we associate with the evil but then there's this other darkness the the dark wood the dark place the the dark night <clears throat> the dark well that saint francis found himself in there's this other darkness that that i love how you've 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 described it often as a sort of an or, an organic 
light that we haven't processed yet. It's dazzling us and we haven't processed it yet. But if we can cultivate a relationship to this darkness, which we, we must do, then it's going to take us even more into, you know, the experience of the truth of who we really are. I'm really excited to hear that class, particularly from you, Carolyn, because I think that this is this is this is the, one of the classes where I think hopefully we'll accompany each other mm -hmm. into that relationship with darkness, where we are perhaps less afraid of darkness and more respectful of it. Well, I, I think it, I think it's so essential to go into uh, the dark because mm -hmm. the dark in ourselves. Mm -hmm. the dark in life, why we're afraid of it, but also because it, it, we're most blinded by the light when we're in the dark. Hmm. That's when it's hardest to see the light. You know, when you, someone flashes a light on when you're sleeping and you, you have to, you know, blink twice. But I, I think it, one of the goals, one of the goals of the light is to become a source to you to discover that your light has the capacity to see the light in other people, to shine the light upon what is dark in another person, to see them clearly, that that to light their candle, to, to illuminate another person, that the light is not just about you, but that the greatest thing you can do with your light is to light up your neighborhood. Yeah. You know? And 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 I think that's the birth of like in the third class, mm -hmm. what you mean by the Christological force in us, mm -hmm. the Christ force, the, the the Christological, it's a cosmic force. It's not a person. Yeah. It is a cosmic force, a source. It's a cosmic source. It's a it's it's a cosmic mothership of of actual holy light that travels through us and into all life. I think that's 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 what the message that the teacher Jesus was ultimately bringing was the message of this greater impersonal cosmic light that is named Christ. But yeah. it's not a person, it's a light. Yeah, I think he brought us an awareness of the self we share with each other. Mm -hmm. He was offering us this, I think, really the antidote to the central trauma in the human experience, which is our sense of separateness from each other. You know, the sense of separateness, which has caused us to think that we have been kicked out of heaven. And, and just as bad, also, that we're separate from nature. You know, we seem to be the only species that thinks it's doing life on its own. And, and here we have this invitation, really, to step into this Christos, into this light of a collective self, a light that belongs to everybody. And I don't know who you are or what your practice is, but if you can make any progress with undoing this optical delusion of separateness, um, you will, you know, you're you're gonna feel a blessing from that, and it's and that would be one of the gifts of the holy season for you. And and really, an understanding as we, you know, go forward into like a cosmic sized love. Mm -hmm. I, I that class is I'm very excited about because I it's it's very challenging to present high mystical truths, as you know. And one of the most challenging truth is that what is in one is in the whole. Mm -hmm. well, and the second one, what we do to one, we do to the whole. But the other side of that is what is happening in the whole happens to us and within us. So mm -hmm. what, what I know is in my history as a medical intuitive, and it took me a long time to recognize this, and that suffering is personal and impersonal. It's intimate and impersonal so that <clears throat> what what made the evaluation of a person's suffering quite a challenge is that oftentimes i recognized that their suffering was impersonal it was linked to the whole 
It was not personal. It was um, uh, connected to their archetypal patterns, connected to whole patterns of the collective suffering. Mm -hmm. But if a person has yet to connect that all life breathes together, that all is one, they're unable to understand that they're sharing an anguish with all life, but they that they are also capable of sharing the joy in life, of, of, of being a part of the of identifying with the journey of all life. And, and I think honestly, Robert, that this transition that we're living, this transformation, mm -hmm. part of this transformation is breaking through that titanium barrier yeah. that we are we are individuals. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And if we could, you know, physicists talk about the extended self, the self that is far greater than your self-image, you know, the self that really belongs to the whole of creation and that belongs to each other. And, and clearly this is not how we've been thinking. And because we haven't been thinking like this, we can see, you know, the, the just the sheer increase in aloneness, mm -hmm. loneliness over the holy season. I tell you what, I mean, I used to work in a, in a hospital in the psychology department. We saw, you know, huge increases in prescriptions for tranquilizers, antidepressants. Most of this was to do with the extreme sense of loneliness that we often feel at this time of year. One of the things I'm excited about is we're creating a community here through uh, not just a journey over six classes, but a, there'll be a community page where we can genuinely like share our reflections and walk through Advent together. And, and you know, the, this phrase of yours, a cosmic sized love. I tell you what, you know, when I first heard that, that stopped me. I was reading your book and it really stopped me. I thought I mustn't go past those words. I've got to stop right here. A cosmic sized love like Robert, take that in for a minute, you know, and and, you know, just to sit with those words is a wonderful invitation. And to let love be bigger than all your ideas of love just for a moment and let love be what it really is. And not not just, you know, a Hallmark card and the sentimental stuff and all that, but genuinely a force that can transform your life and our experience of the world. Yeah, that's what this class is for. I'm, you know, really excited about that. Which brings us mm -hmm. to miracles. Mm -hmm. The fifth class, a time for miracles. Yeah. I love miracles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just love the mystery of what is a miracle. I mean, essentially, what we're doing is taking our students into the way the mystical world works. Yeah. The way how the mystics understood the, the 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 nature of God, why they were so enchanted with God, why they understood the the the, the that the mystical world does not it plays by mystical rules, which are the same laws of science, only the governing laws. So, the mystical nature of miracles has so much to do with what a human be being trusts is possible. Mm -hmm. Not by, I bet, is it, could be, da 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 but how you understand I am breathing God at all times and that can change me at any moment. Yeah, and we are, you know, anybody who shows up for Advent will, I believe, experience a miracle. What will that miracle be? That's not for us to say. It's more for us to recognize that the miracle will happen, to make a space for it, to be open for it, and, and to experience. We don't determine what the miracle is. It's more that we will receive the miracle. And, um, and we've called this epiphany because, of course, also the, the teaching of epiphany is that there is a power that is greater than all the powers of the world as represented by the three kings. You know, there is a power beyond the power of this world. And when we tune into that power, that's when we experience miracles. And I, and I will say one of the 
best definitions for miracles came from. You know, I was educated by nuns in a convent and through my college years. And, and um, there was a miracle healing that occurred, um, a couple of them at the uh, convent, at the uh, church. By the, uh, the, and they considered that the foundress of the community of nuns was the source. And she was um, canonized, the eighth American saint, about mm. 10 years ago. And during an interview with one of the nuns, CNN reporter, about this canonization, this reporter, and you know reporters are always so cynical, but she said to Sister Kevin, what is a miracle? And, and Kevin just fired back and said, oh, well, that's when heaven bends the laws of nature just for you, just for you, just for you. And that answer was so perfect. Because what a miracle is, is that there's a natural order to things. The universe is law. God is law. And yet it is totally impersonal mm. and yet fully intimate. Mm. And that intimacy is discovered through your personal connection in prayer and in your own belief system. And a miracle is when something happens that could not otherwise have happened. But it could be something like, I don't know how it is I suddenly felt forgiveness for this person because mm -hmm. I couldn't get there on my own. So a miracle is not like suddenly you, you get the, the car you always wanted. Let's understand that what a miracle is, is something essential to your healing, to making you a better person to taking you from one dark place to a light place that you have exhausted all your own resources to get to. And that's when heaven intervenes. Can't wait for that one. And finally, we close mm -hmm. on the bright morning star. Yeah. And I think this is really where what the invitation is. It's, it's the start of a new year and every day is really another invitation uh for advent every day is another day to experience a time of light a time of birth so we're going to see if we can you know just step into the new year in in such a way that we bring that whole spirit of uh of of the holy season with us and also that you know that we engage the the holy imagination this is one of our themes for this class but we actually allow ourselves to imagine the possibility that is available to us when we're not being so busy being ourselves and telling our story and being really open to to that imagination and to what's possible um in in the year to come so that we can take this program the spirit of this program and the spirit of our community with us forward into the new year well, I, I I will say that one of the um, one of my ideas for that class, exactly that, and following you, is that we have we are somehow programmed to think I need to start the new year with a resolution, or I need to, you know. But I think starting a new year with the idea with the belief that I am bringing grace into this year. These are the graces I want to bring in. This is how I want to establish a pattern of grace. This is how I want to establish a pattern of, of, of lighting my way. This mm. is the grace I want to enter this year with. That's for me, the bright morning star. This is how I want to fill this year ahead of me. And this is what I resolve to leave behind me. Mm -hmm. And that is, the, for me, the holy way of entering a new year of life. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's, you see, that's, again, super, super wonderful. Karen, this is good. This is good. It's, it's, I am so grateful. You came mm -hmm. to this brilliant class. Well, and I'm grateful to you for, for for you know recognizing the possibility that's here. And I'm just I'm I'm so excited that we get to do this work together. We'll 
We'll teach backwards and forwards on the whole program, and we'll be present in the in the uh, community page as we go. And that sense of community is going to be wonderful too. It's Absolutely. Wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we'll teach just like this, and it'll mm -hmm. be the best. Yeah. So I wish you a happy Advent, first day of Advent, and um, I'll see you for class. See you for class.